Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, how, how does everybody know? Does everybody know that God is the one that leaves the 99 for the one? I, I have a testimony this morning, and it's a praise, or praise report and prayer request all in one. My best friend, he has a son. His son, before he got to know the Lord, he OD'd on fentanyl twice. He, I know for sure that one time they brought him back to life, and I'm not sure about the second time. I think it was two times, but I'm not positive. I know that he overdosed on fentanyl twice. Then he, he came to alongside once a few times, went to the Bible studies, gave his life over to God. And in that time, we saw him change. He became sober. He started becoming that new creation. I'm not sure what happened, but something in his life happened, and he fell away from the Lord. He became a prodigal child. And my best friend, he texted us and asked for prayer for his son. He didn't know, didn't know where he was, hadn't, had no clue. We prayed over him at that time that the Lord would bring his son to a place that the Lord could use him again. Four days, four days later, uh, he calls and he tells us that in Mission, uh, Mission Canyon Hospital over in California, his, fun, his son was found, was unresponsive for four days on a ventilator. No, there was nothing. He was just there. He reached out to everybody that he knew and asked for prayer. In that time of prayer, the Lord brought him. So on the, sixth, the fifth day, still unresponsive. On the sixth day, he came out of it, and the, uh, the doctor is saying that he's going to have a full recovery and all that all is happening. But in that, we stray from the Lord. We go away. We push away from Him. But in those prayers, in all these things that are happening in life, the Lord brings us back to where we need to be. He humbles us to where we have to be. He cuts. He, he is a fire that consumes everything that's not of Him. And in these prayers, I feel like it was taking His Son back to that spot where He can be used by Him. Now, are they out of the woods? No, we need to pray. We need to pray for his son, for a softness of the heart. We need to pray that he gets it, that he gets that love relationship. Yes, every trial, every single trial that we go through is for the Lord. It's Philippians 1, 6, be confident in this, that he who has started a good works and you will carry it on until completion. So in this time, this is a time that the Lord used. He used this and he brought him to this. My prayers was for the mom and the father that they wouldn't have a hardness of heart, that they would be able, that the Lord's will be done, and that they had peace and joy through it, knowing that it was the Lord. And in that prayer, their son, their prayers for their son brought him back. And it's just a joy. It's a praise report because look at how good God is. Even in, our, in, even in our stubbornness, even in our waywardness, he will bring us back to that place. Even, even if it causes pain, because he uses that pain for our good. He uses that pain for our good. Amen? Okay. Sweetheart, will you come pray us in? Thank you. Hi, Dad. Oh, how we love you. We just, our hearts burst with adoration for you. We lift you on high. There's nobody like you. Amen. We're here to hear from you, God. We need a message. We need your love. We need you all the time, every day, every second, every minute. We can't do this without you. And so, Lord, we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know anything, but we know you, and that's all we need to know. As long as we have you, we have everything we need. And if we don't have you, we have nothing. And so, Father, use my husband. Speak through him in a mighty way. Let his words come from you and not himself, Lord. Overtake any, um, anybody that has a negative mind or bad thoughts. Just give them peace right now so that they can just fill your presence and be in the moment, Lord. Anything that's distracting or is, we're thinking about our to-do lists 
or whatever is happening, Lord, silence it all and catch us in this moment with you and speak to us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, the name that has no rival, and that every knee will bow down to and every tongue will confess the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Amen. Good job. Okay, my, my message today is on trusting in God. And I'm going to start off in Luke chapter 11, 13 through, or 1 through 13. Luke chapter 11, 1 through 13. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he, when he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine is on a journey, a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside set answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't, give, I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you. Even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of, which of you, uh, you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if, he asks, uh, uh, or, or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to, do, uh, to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? In this the beginning of this is talking about how we should pray. And the beginning of the prayer, it says, Father, hallowed be your name. What does that mean? It means to give glory, to give praise to him. It doesn't mean to get stuck in your funk. It means to rise above what the problems, what the issues are in your life. This really hit me hard because I already had a message started. And then on Friday, the Lord told me, that I needed to do it on trust, and I needed to give the testimony of my best friend and his son. And this is what he showed me, is the first part is in the prayer, that we need to get out of our own funk. Things come against us. Things happen in our lives, but we need to focus on God the Father. And through that focus, it says, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us our day, our daily bread, meaning he is providing every single one of our needs for us that we need to trust in Him and what He's already providing for us. We need to get out of our focus on anything else. It's about glorifying God to set down self. Our self is what gets in the way in everything that goes on. So this first prayer is saying, it's an outline of saying exactly how we need to step into this. And how do we fight our battles? We fight our battles through prayer. In Ephesians 6, it talks about putting on the armor of God. And then after it tells us all about the armor of God in Ephesians 6, 18, pray in the Spirit with all types of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. What does this mean? This means that's how we fight our battle. So in this, the Lord is telling us and outlining how we need to fight our battle. It's saying to first stop, to glorify His name, to be in a rejoiceful spirit, not to be always cast down. And, yeah, we are supposed to mourn with the mourn and rejoice with the rejoice. But the mourning is with somebody else's suffering, to come alongside them and feel their pain and give them and understand their grief that they're going through and help them walk through it nudging them into, back into health, into Christ. And even if they're going through something, people lose, 
friends, family members. It's a ripping of the flesh, but we need to come alongside each other. We need to mourn with those, but in this, we need to rejoice in who Christ is because he is that love, that love above all love, the agape love, the one that he's teaching us how to love this way. Through Jesus Christ, we are, a, we are showing others how to pray and how, to, how that love is supposed to reach others. That's how we are a light unto this world. Amen? Amen. And then it says, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive, uh, forgive everyone who has sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation. This is a loaded thing, for he has forgiven us for our sins. But how can he forgive us for our sins if we're not forgiving others for their sins? Yeah. We, have to get, we have to be able to let go of that. Why? And this temptation, if we aren't forgiving others, we are being led into temptation. It causes a root of bitterness that comes into us, and that root of bitterness will indwell, and then it'll fester, and it will come out of us, and that is what is going to lead us out into temptation. It is going to divide us from God and who he truly is in us. The next part that I have to talk about is this, it's saying, verses 5 through five through 8, it says, Then just as Jesus, or Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine is on a journey, has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked. And my children and I are in bed. I can't give, uh, give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. This is the way we need to be coming in prayer to God. He is saying, come in boldness with audacity. Tell them your problems. Don't worry about the time, the place, the way you feel. Lay it at his feet. He's saying to do this. But then it said, talks here about being bread and three loaves. The Lord revealed this to me. The Father is the bread. The Son is the broken bread. And the Holy Spirit is whenever we ate that bread. God the Father came to be flesh. Whenever he came to be flesh, it was the Son. He became the broken bread for our sins. On the Last Supper, it talks about how he broke the bread and said, Eat. That is whenever the Holy Spirit indwelled into us. It was the eating of the bread. Three loaves of bread. It was talking about the bread, the flesh, the things that were going to happen. The three loaves is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's saying to come with a boldness. The Father will listen to us. He will give us what we need. He is saying to do this, and it's laying it out there. And then right after that, that's what this parable is talking about. It's talking about prayer, and then it's talking about how to do this in a prayer. I've read this so many times, and this time the Lord just opened this up to me, a different, in a completely different light. I had never seen the three loaves that way. And the Lord said, look, this is what it is, the three loaves. What's three? Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What's the bread mean? Look at the Last Supper, how the breaking of the bread. I am the full loaf. I broke myself because I loved you so much. I came to be the sin, to take that sin. I put it on my shoulders and I laid it to rest. I put it in the grave. Death has no sting against us anymore. So in this, it's talking about to come to him with that boldness. Come to him in that strength of knowing where he is, giving him the trust because trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. He is telling us how to do these things. Amen? Amen. Okay, and then it says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be open. Right here is saying that whatever you're seeking for, he, you will find because he's going to show you. Wherever you knock, he's going to open the door that needs to be opened, and he's going to shut the ones that need to be shut. But it's up to us to step. It's up to us to 
to listen and then take that first step. It's not just, oh, I'm just going to sit here and he's just going to provide it. No, he's going to give you, he's going to reveal himself to you, and he's going to make it known to you where you choose to step. If you're knocking, you're already seeking, so you're already in a progression. So what he's saying is if you're actually looking for me, he's going to reveal himself to you. But in this, it's so glorious because we all are looking, we are all seeking, so we can all have a rest assured here. We can know that he's going to reveal us that way. He is going to do that mighty works in us, like in Philippians 1.6. He started that good works. He's going to complete it. He's going to complete it in us. Why? We are all seeking him out. Yes, there are those pains. There are, are those struggle, uh, struggles. Like my best friend's son. He went, he unresponsive. He's in the hospital. Yes, did he fall away? Yeah, he did. But through everybody's prayer, the petitions, the Lord brought him to that place that he's taking all that was not of him and he's starting it over. Now he's going to have to start back and that freshness of who he started to be whenever he first accepted Jesus Christ and started working and living for him. Yes, the enemy stole something, but whenever the enemy steals something, the Lord will bring it back and give it back to you. The enemy, yes, he can steal stuff from us. The Lord allows him to do that. Why? It's to mature us. It's just give us a strength. It's to give us faith to, so that we won't stumble and fall when our adversary, or adversity comes. So in this, understand that we do go through trials, but in those trials, they are strengthened. They are to strengthen us. They are to mature us. They are to grow us. So rather than focusing on what is happening at this time, understand and count it as joy because the Lord is using it for His good. Amen. And then it says, Which of, of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If then, though, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen. This is saying... That each one of us that is a father, or each one of us that has kids, we want to give a good gift to them. We look out for our sons, our daughters. We look out for those. How much more is God the Father? He sent his son. Is that enough? Is that enough for yes, us? Enough. Right, right there should be enough. But look at everything else that he's still doing. To this day, all the mountains he's moving in our lives. Look at all the things, all the testimonies, all the praise reports that you that you talk about, all the things that he's still doing. He's a mountain moving God. But honestly, that one thing, him sending his son to die on the cross was enough. If he did nothing else, that should be enough for each and every one of us. That should be. But he loves us so much that he is still moving. He is still doing. He is still on the move because he wants us to get that relationship with him, that love relationship with him, because that love relationship with him is what he desires. He wants us to want him. He desires us to want him. Mm -hmm. He has a jealousy for us, for everything that we are going through. He doesn't want us to go through the trials, but he allows them because we are stubborn. We're hard-headed. I know I am. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Nothing growing up there anymore. Right? <laughs> 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 okay. And Amen. Now we're going to James. <laughs> definitely gave you a great ability. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amen. I'm serious. It's awesome. This. Yeah. This right sure. here is not me. Yeah, this exactly. is this no, is completely it. this yeah. is completely yeah. him. I yeah. I am not putting you on but the spot. You're so hard <laughs> I'm I'm so hard headed. Yeah. I am so, and the Lord has shown me that. Yeah. So in that, whenever I I smack my head against the wall once, yeah. I hit my knees now because I'm yeah. like, okay, that's all it takes now. I'm I'm good. I'm on my knees. You know how he, uh, how I smack my head the most, and how he shows me that I'm in the wrong is through my wife. Yeah. 
and it's a humbling and it's a way of me realizing and we are best friends what I lack and she has and what she lacks and I have so it's such an amazing thing that the Lord has brought us into it really is because it's a testimony unto him because I've fallen short I'm, I'm the foolish thing I'm the weak thing in the world but he has given me strength in him as I am submitted to him as I am humble to him he has is bringing it up. But it's while I'm humble. Yeah. If I get in my own pride, I get smacked and I'm like, oh, well, never mind. Okay, okay, I'm good. Amen? Okay. So let's go to James chapter 1, 2 through 8. Chapter 1, 2 through 8. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that, the, that this tests your faith, produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without fa uh, finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. The first of this is saying about, count it pure joy to go through the trials and the tribulations. It is a maturing. It's an understanding. It's a gaining. You, we find ourselves on our face again. But a righteous man falls seven times but gets back up again. We find ourselves on our face again and we think, we feel shame. The enemy is trying to sow us and say, no, you should feel this way. No, you should feel this way. No, no, don't. And it's the enemy. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord is using that. He's scooping us back up and he's bringing us back. But it's in transparency. It's in our own, it's not in our own ability. It's in our transparency of saying, I've fallen short again. Lord, use me. Lord, give me the strength. This is what I am. I'm broken. I am weak. I have hurts. I have failures. I have these things. Wherever you give it to him is wherever you can use it. Wherever you give him these things, mm -hmm. he can bring you up into an understanding because you realize it's not in yourself. That's wherever he truly can use you is in that broken state. Mm -hmm. Because in that brokenness, you know, I can do nothing apart mm -hmm. from God with okay. Jesus Christ. He is the one that's bridging. He is the one that has purified me. He is the one that the Lord sees through me as righteousness, right standing with the Lord. So in this, this is what it's saying, is to count it as pure joy to, that these things, through perseverance, will cause our faith to grow, will cause us to mature, and they are something, if the enemy is coming against you, that means you're being used by the Lord. You may not think it, you may not feel it at that moment, but if you're going through trials, if you're going through tribulations, that means you're being used. If you're feeling like you're being singled out, you are being used. Why? Because that's the enemy coming against you. That is everything trying to be turned up in your world. And yes, we do fall short. We all fall short. And in this time, he will bring us to that spot. He will use us. And it's wherever we are completely at our lowest, where we don't think, oh, can I be used? Can I be used? It's wherever he can truly gain and give that strength and give you that that ability and that love that you you grow out of that you grow into a new creation into this person that can be used and just brought about by him but through this it says that he will that if anybody is lacking or that he will mature us completely not lacking in anything meaning that whatever you are lacking Ask him for it, because in the very next verse it says, if any of you are lacking wisdom, you should ask God. And what is this talking about? This is talking about 
line your thoughts up with the promises of the Lord. Wherever you start getting into this, you get into this, and you line yourself into this, and you start praying His will, you will lack nothing because He will start giving you all the things that you're needed. That He will bring you to that place, and He will reveal every spot that you need to go through. And in those times that you're going through it, it's to count it as joy because He is providing you with all the things you need. And He is going to take you so you get that wisdom you need. And usually, you should be able to look at somebody else and see their mistakes and be able to learn and get, gain wisdom through somebody else. Look at me. I've went through so much. I'm up here speaking of my life and life experiences because I would like... And it's what I've been through the Lord can use. Because first off, then people can say, He's no different than me. Mm -hmm. Secondly... He can show it's through his brokenness that I can use him. Because in that brokenness, it's all me that gets the glory. Because if he's showing he doesn't have it all together, then if I don't have it all together, I'm fine. I can make it. I can do this. Amen? So in this, it says that a double-minded person should not be able to expect anything from the Lord. So that's Wherever you go into your own understanding. It says trust in the Lord with all your heart, not in your own understanding. It means that you have to completely give it to Him. It doesn't mean that you don't feel it again, but it means you constantly give it to Him. It, whenever something goes wrong, you give it back to Him. Wherever you have doubt, you give it to Him. You hand it to Him. You don't keep it to yourself. Whenever you hold on to it is that un a double-mindedness because then you're trying to do it in your own understanding. You're trying to gain it it, do something by your own strength. I did that for a lot of years of my life. I would try to give it to the Lord, and then I thought it was, okay, this is just the math equation. That I do this to this, and I get this. So I tried to do that, and everything fell short. And, it just, and I said, why am I, what's happening? Why is everything going wrong for me again? And it was in that time. I know for me and Misty, I, for me personally, I have relationship issues. We got married. I didn't have to deal with relationship issues. I, I love my mom, and I completely love her. She's here for me. But at a young age, I saw my mom leave my dad. I saw the hurt that it caused my dad. It was a, it was a pain. It was a wound that happened to me. Yes, I forgave her. But it's to women now. I feel this okay. The first love of my life. She cheated on me, and it took two years before she told me. And this wasn't in a Christian because I had walked away from God at this time. So the enemy was using everything to just come against me and just to hurt me and make me feel even worse and less than and all these different things so that I didn't feel like I could trust women. Well, I went to prison and I got a love relationship with Jesus Christ. And in that love relationship, he held me of how my brothers picked on me, all these other things, of feeling less than in all these other ways. But now I'm walking through having a relationship with a woman that I love and having these pains that I feel that she's going to do the same thing. I have to walk through this day after day. Why? Because the enemy is there to still kill and destroy. If I try to shove it under the rug and not deal with these things, I'm being transparent here. I'm saying, I have this. I go through this. I am walking through this with my wife right now. And is it glorious? Yes, it is glorious. Is it hard? Yes, it's hard. Is it dirty sometimes? Yes, it's dirty. Sometimes I feel like I'm doing stuff the wrong way. The enemy comes against me and it feels like everything's going in the wrong direction, that I'm doing something wrong. That And that's in my life, but I, it's whenever I feel that way that I hit my knees and I give it to the Lord. And it's Him healing me. It's the Lord saying, you walked through this. Yes, I took it from you. This is the residuals, the broken up pieces of the hurt, the pains, the wounds that were already there. Now I'm making you walk through them so I can heal them over you. So you can put the word of truth on these things. These are things I talked about my best friend. I'm talking about my own relationship and what I'm walking through right now. I'm telling every single one of you, we all are broken. We all fall short. Amen. In this brokenness, in this falling short, 
the Lord only wants you to give it to Him and keep giving it to Him. And the more you give it to Him and the more you walk through this, the more He's going to heal you. The more, he, the, the more something's going to come off. He chips it off a layer at a time like an onion. He just he peels it back. And then the next He peels it back. And that's this life. It's a peeling process until we go to be with Jesus Christ at that end time, and then we will be completely pure and no longer have any of this of the flesh to hold us down, to drag us through this. But it's a process, and through this process, we give it to the Lord. We allow Him to show us this. We allow Him to guide us and strengthen us. And I just, that was, that was what the Lord told me to bring this message on. I love you guys, and God bless. Can I pray it for everybody yeah. else? Yeah. 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 Dear Lord, I thank you. I thank you for everybody that's here. I just pray. I pray over each and every one of us, Lord. I allow, I just ask you, I ask you to allow them to realize that in this brokenness, there's no shame, there's no guilt that we need to give it to you, wholly give it to you, with a boldness, because it's for you, Lord. It's for you. And in that, you are going to use us in such a mighty way. So I ask you to reveal yourself, your love, to each and every one of these people here, including me, Lord. Allow us to walk in victory, no longer feeling guilt or shame over any of these things that are going on, because that's of the enemy. The Lord wants to renew that area of our life. He wants us to give it to Him. So I ask you, allow, allow each and every person to just give that spot, give that area, give whatever it is on their hearts right now to you, Lord, that we just need to trust in you. And as we are trusting in you, you will do the works for this, dear Lord, that it's through you, it's through you completely, Lord. So I thank you. I thank you for each and every one of these people that are here. I thank you for allowing them to hear your words today. And I thank you for allowing you to use me, Lord, that you could use the lowly, that you could use the shameful, that you could use me in such a mighty way. It's such a blessing to see where you've taken me in this life. And I just ask you to reveal this to each and every person here, Lord, that you want to do the same for them that you want to do the same for each and every person, Lord. So I ask you to just break these things apart and just to reveal yourself to them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.